Good evening. Grab yourself a psalm book with me tonight. 477, The Solid Rock. Let's all stand tonight as we sing song number 477. On that first verse, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. On that second, when darkness fails his lovely face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. On that last, when he shall come with trumpet sound, oh, may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone, faultless to stand before the throne. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. Well, God bless you. Thank you for your faithfulness Wednesday night. Happy April to you. I know it's, what is it, April the 3rd? April the 3rd, but I forgot to say that on Sunday. So, yes, it is April. And, well, guess what? We came, the man came to measure, and uh, they went ahead and put some more carpet in. So isn't that exciting? So they added that, and tomorrow we're supposed to be here around 9 o'clock, and they're going to finish this out. So phase one will be completed. Well, we got more stuff to do, but I'm saying that's kind of very exciting. So that is a blessing. Amen. Excited about that. Good day on Sunday. You're going to have a good night tonight. Get back to our teaching about Satan, our number one enemy. And if it will be handing out some sheets and going through some good things, so it will be a blessing to you tonight. Thank you for being here. And I'm going to ask Dave, if you would, to please lead us more prayer. Amen. Let's sing again. Take your psalm book, 223, draw me nearer, 223 in your psalm book tonight. And we'll sing those first, third, and last verses tonight. Song number 223. <clears throat> I am thine, O Lord, I have heard thy voice, and it told thy love to me. But I long to rise in the arms of faith and be closer drawn to thee. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord. To thy precious bleeding side on that third. Oh, the pure delight of a single hour that before thy throne I spend. When I kneel in prayer and with thee, my God, I commune as friend with friend. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. There are depths of love that I cannot know, 
till I cross the narrow sea. There are heights of joy that I may not reach till I rest in peace with thee. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. All right, plus we got the doors on today, so that was um, good progress, amen? So I am very excited about that, and it's going to look sharp and sharper, so... Then we're going to get a new uh, modesty board. That's what they call it. We was it, There was a choir up here, I guess, before, and we're going to just leave it like that and not change the platform. We'll put, be putting the chairs up for Sunday, but that white board that comes across, we're going to have a new one um, made in the, like the same likeness as this. So it'll be, uh, it's going to go all the way down to the floor, and it'll be capped off with a brown piece of wood like this and it'll have the square boxes across. It's going to look very nice. So that'll be done. That should be installed by the very first of May. Um, Evangelist Watts, Brother Watts, he's going to be gone for two and a half weeks, and so that'll be coming up pretty soon. Okay, so that's going to look very, very sharp and excited about that. Then we have a candy hunt scheduled for next Sunday, and that's for all the bus riders and for the young folks back there. And um, so... If you want to help towards that, please bring that candy on Sunday for our young people, and that'll just help save a few dollars for the church. If you want to contribute to that, that would be great. All right, let me take your prayer request before tonight's offering. And does anyone have a prayer request tonight that you would like to share with us? We'd like to write that down. Or if you got something good, I, yes, sir. A lot better. It's a lot better. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, that. that. Since Sunday, great improvement. Just really, just amazing. So that's good. We're we're glad about that. That's right. Oh, it's incredible. It really is. Yeah. Yeah, your body can heal itself. I mean, you're not going to live to be 150. Uh, but if you if we put the right things in, that that helps. We need the right fuel. So, but it's a challenge for all of us. So, well, thank you, Brother Terry. Anybody else? Per request, or you got a blessing? All right, come ahead, young man. And we are just going to have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we are grateful for our folks and church family and um, place to meet and to worship you. And Lord, I do pray for continued healing for. Uh, Mrs. Putney, it's great to have her on Sunday night, and uh, so there's some strength going there in her body, and that, that's good, and pray that would just continue and give her energy. There's a, it was a pretty rough thing they went through, so we just pray for continued healing. Pray for Brother Terry, that you continue to bring healing to his body, Lord, and thank you for him. And I know Mrs. Hartle is supposed to be um, heading back this area, um, sometime in the next week or so, I believe. So we'll be looking forward to having her. Pray that our bus route would be up this week. That be uh, some of these young folks that have missed for a couple weeks would uh, they'd be here on Sunday. We sh- certainly want to be a help to them. And and uh, one of the girls was saved a few weeks ago. We want her to to continue to grow. We don't want her to to, to fall off the wagon, so to speak. And thank you for Noah being saved on Sunday. I pray that he'll come back and that uh, you'd give him a, a desire to, to grow as a Christian. 
and uh, we want folks to get saved, but that, that we need to get them growing, growing and staying and, and grounded. And uh, so Wednesday night's a great time for us to get grounded in your word. And, and uh, so, but we thank you for the ones that have given towards the building fund and the carpet. And uh, so I pray that you continue to uh, bless our folks with their, with their jobs. And uh, also thank you for the giving. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's take our psalm books again. 243, I Am Resolved. 243 is the song number tonight. We'll sing those first, second, and last verses. Song number 243. I am resolved no longer to linger, charmed by the world's delight. Things that are higher, things that are nobler, these have alert my sight. I will hasten to him, hasten so glad and free. Jesus, greatest, highest, I will come to thee. I am resolved to go to the Savior, leaving my sin and strife. He is the true one, he is the just one, he hath the words of life. I will hasten to him, hasten so glad and free. Jesus, greatest, highest, I will come to thee. Sing that last. I am resolved to enter the kingdom, leaving the paths of sin. Friends may oppose me, foes may beset me, still will I enter in. I will hasten to him, hasten so glad and free. Jesus, greatest, highest, I will come to thee. That was Sarah in absentia, wasn't it? So she... Uh, Sarah, our daughter, records some of those things, or they record them, so that's those offertories. That's kind of nice. Hey, man. All right, let me see here. I want us to turn to 1 Peter chapter 5, please. 1 Peter chapter 5. And do you have your piece of paper, um, the first part of Satan, the enemy? Do you still have that one? We only have a little bit to cover on the back. But it would be the very first page that we started two weeks ago. Do you have it? Don't have it? 
We have an extra one here. Let's see. How about you, Brother Terry? You all good? Let me know if I, I have extras. Let me know if you have it. If you don't have it. Let's see. Do you want to take this back to Mrs. Chushan, please? Thank you. Anybody else? You all good? Okay. And then we'll finish up, and then we'll get out a new piece, okay? All right, so we're going to start at 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. That doesn't have, have nothing to do with the lesson. We're just going to start off. You always have to have a verse that you have foundation, right? So 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 8, and the Word of God says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. So, you know, the, the thing is the devil's everywhere. I mean, he is he's everywhere, alive, and he's real. And uh, so we have to be on guard. And it, whom, whoever it is, he's looking for people to, he can pounce on, he can devour, he can ruin the reputation and their life. So he's real. I don't know if any of you, and I'll pray after this. <clears throat> when I I looked this up, um, let me see if I have it written down here. Just give me a second here. Uh, I think it was in 1945. 1945, when I grew up as a little fella, a young fella, and some of you folks in your 60s around that, well, you, you, even then, you're fifth, you remember. They used to have a, a little um, cartoon, Casper the Friendly Ghost. Anybody remember that? Yep. You know, all those bad people, four of us, all sinners. But that's where the world gets you to start believing that the devil is a good guy, that it's not that bad, that he's not powerful. And... You know, when folks come into our church that don't have, that have tattoos, I don't make a big deal about it. But I remember growing up that that was big when I was little, where you would, you would um, give them baseball cards, you'd get bubble gum or something like that, and you'd have those tattoos that you would you'd water and you'd put them on. And me and my siblings would do that. We thought it was kind of neat or whatever. And that's how they get you started on it. I'm just saying the devil, he, he's, he's um, so powerful and, and, and so deceitful that um, we have to all be careful. Let's pray. Father, I pray that you would bless the study tonight. That we, Our enemy is real. And he's so much more powerful than we, we, can't, we can't even imagine. We just, there's, it seems like there's so little we can really comprehend. We can understand it in our head, but... You know, just the magnitude of the universe, just the magnitude of the sun and the earth. And as uh, Brother Terry mentioned, our bodies were fearfully and wonderfully made. It, God, you're just so great and so powerful that we just, we only can understand just a little bit. But help us understand that Satan's real and that he's ferocious like a lion and that he's known to mess with him. So I pray you'd keep us from the devil. Lord, keep us in your will. As he sings in Jesus' name, amen. So on the back of the page that you have, the part we're starting tonight is Satan. Where is Satan now? Where is Satan now? So we're going to look at um, A, according to Ephesians 2.2. 2. So let's go to go backwards to the book of Ephesians, please. Go backwards to the book of Ephesians. Chapter 2 and verse 2, and we'll try to get people to answer the questions. And most of these, the answer is in the verse. These aren't trick questions. They're not essays. It's just you read the verse and you fill, in it, fill it in. Okay, Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 2. But we're doing a concentrated study about the devil, and most folks don't go through these verses in their devotions at home. I don't. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2. Where in time past she walked according to the course of this world. When people, are, if they're unsaved, 
They're going to walk like the world. They're going to live like the world. They're in the world. They're of the world. And when we get saved, we're supposed to come out of the world. We're supposed to be separate, saith the Lord. We're not supposed to be worldly. We're in time past, she walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. So, Satan is the prince and the power of the... Yes, back there. Air. Air, right. Very good. Wow, you got that one. Your dad didn't. That's wonderful. <laughs> Tell your dad to pay attention back there. <laughs> good. Good job for you. Power of the air. Um... Satan is in charge of this world. The devil is in charge. People say, well, why would God let that happen? Well, it's not God's fault. It's, it's the devil's fault. Let's turn to um, verses we've looked at before, but I want you to see this again and understand. Matthew chapter 4, when Jesus was being tempted by Satan, um, he, uh, the devil gave him three temptations. So the devil, he's a prince of power of the air. He's in charge of what's going on. He is the one that's controlling the nations. you know that? He, he's even sadly controlling our country. So he's in charge of everything. Um, right now it's his, his domain, but not much longer. Matthew chapter 4 and verse 8 and 9, please. Verse 8. Again, the devil take them up into an exceeding high mountain and showeth them all the kingdoms, all the kingdoms of the world, and the glory of them. So whatever the big kingdom is that you think is powerful, Russia, China, United States, England, um, he's in charge of all that. He has his people in those places. Verse 8 again. Again, the devil taketh him, Jesus, up into an exceeding high mountain and showeth them all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. Why, why, does, why does somebody want to run for president of the United States? I think there's some presidents that want our country to be better. I do. But they really, I think a lot of it has to do because of glory. You know, um, many of them, that was what was feeding them. Verse 9, And saith unto him, Satan saith unto Jesus, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. So those people who are in charge of these countries, they basically fall down and worship the devil. Really, that's what it is. So, according to Ephesians 2, 2, Satan is a prince of power of the air. He is not omnipresent, but he has a lot of followers. And it talks about that in Ephesians chapter um, 2 and verse 2, the children of disobedience. And we're going to look at a verse about that later on if we get to it. So where's Satan now? He's all over the place. Well, he's not, he's, God is omnipresent. Satan isn't. But he has a lot of followers. So you and I are probably not going to get the attention of the devil because we're not important enough people. But he has a, pl a lot of his, his followers, other devils, um, out to get us. And, and plus all those people, they do his bidding. Just like you do, hopefully you're doing God's bidding because you got the Holy Spirit in you. Well, all these other people, they're just going to do an evil. And they, probably, they would enjoy um, to ruin a Christian's testimony in their life. So uh, you don't think that way, but that's how they think. Okay, B, according, let's go to Revelation chapter 12, please. Revelation chapter 12. So the devil is very real, he's very powerful, and we know that Jesus, when he was tempted there, there's more than one Gospels, in Matthew chapter 4, he quotes scriptures, and that's how you get, that's how you resist the devil, the word of God. You can't stand the word of God. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 10. So where's Satan now? Well, He's, he's in the air, but he's, he's in control of this world right now. Revelation 12.10. And, and I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now 
is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accuse them before our God day and night. You got to be careful about accusing people. Satan is accuser of the brethren. You have to be careful about accusations, what you say about people, because that's what the devil is. He's the false accuser. According to Revelation chapter 12, 10, Satan can appear before God, that's the word, G-O-D, to accuse believers. And, um, and what's the accuse? He gives us false accusations. Let's turn to the book of Job, please, before the book of Psalm, Job. So when the devil ruins someone's life, do you know who's real happy about that? The dirty devil. You say, well, they have a flesh. Right, but he's controlling the world. He's the one that's instigating all this evil. He's the one that's leading people to concoct all this stuff. And to, he gives them the inventions, the, the wicked inventions. He's the great counterfeiter, the devil. He has false gospel. He has false Bibles. He has false prophets. Many, many today. Okay, Job chapter 1, and everybody knows, all the adults here know the story of Job and his life and what he went through. We're talking about the accuser of the brethren. That's why it's very important to be careful about accusing people. Um, sometimes something has to be brought out in the open, but you better make sure that you're not getting on the telephone, the internet, and spreading everything around. And um, I think you know what I'm talking about. Job chapter one, verse ten, eleven. So Satan is talking to the to God. Let's look at them, verse nine. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, "Doth Job fear God for not? I mean, he's always stirring up trouble." All the time. You know, because Job was the best Christian on the earth. He feared God and he shewed evil. He hated evil. So Satan's there to accuse Job. He's making false accusations. And um, verse 10. So Satan's um, stepping further. Hast thou made an hedge about him and about all his house and about all that he hath on every side? You're just protecting him. He's just, you're, you're, you're coddling Job. You're making it so easy in Job's life. Well, Job was living for God. Well, God blesses those that live for him. Psalm 1, verses 1 through 3, blesses a man. I mean, God should bless those that live for him. He, he, he wants to. <clears throat> Why? So we can do more for him. Okay. Thou hast blessed the work of his hands. And his substance has increased the yeah, well, he's living right. He's doing right. But look at Satan says, but put forth thine hand now and touch all that he hath, and he will curse thee to the face. It's pretty strong, isn't it? Yes. We take it all away, and he'll curse you. No, that's not true at all. But he's making accusations. Yeah, he only loves you because you're pampering him. You take it all away, he'll turn on you in a dime. Well, that's a false accusation. That's not true. <clears throat> Let's go to chapter 2 <clears throat> and verses 4 through 10. Job chapter 2, verses 4 and 10. So here comes the devil again. So Job passed the first test, Right? He lost all of his children, ten children. He lost his wealth. And now he's coming back again because guess what? He, he was wrong. He was a false accuser about Job. Job didn't turn his back on God. What's it say then? verse 22 in chapter 1? In all this, Job sinned not, right? Nor charged God foolishly. No. He was lying. He's a liar. He's the father of liars. 
Thou shalt, thou shalt not lie. Lying is a bad thing. Okay, verses 4 through 10. So Satan's coming back, round two. Remember, he had three rounds of Jesus in, in uh, Matthew chapter 4, round two. And Satan answered the Lord and said, skin, I'm not reading all the verses. And Satan answered the Lord, and skin for skin, yea, all that a man hath will he give for his life. That's true, isn't it? Most people be that way. They'll give up everything for life, right? We see it, people that get physically sick. You know, they'll, and I would be that way. I mean, if, if Mrs. Hawkins were to get sick, I'd sell everything I could to have her live. That'd be the right thing to do, right? Wouldn't it? I, that's how I feel. Okay. In other words, you'll give up anything for your life. But, uh, verse 5, But put forth thine hand now, and touch his bone and his flesh. Here it is. And he'll curse thee to thy face. You wait and see. He's accuser of the brethren. That's how stuff gets stirred up in a church. That's how stuff gets stirred up in a family. That's how stuff gets stir, stirred up in businesses. One person saying this thing or at colleges, someone saying this, accusing this, they're being this way, and pretty soon you got a hornet's nest. And the Lord said to Satan, Behold, he is in thine hand to save his life. You can do anything to him physically. We've attacked and we've taken away his children, we've taken away his material. Go ahead. Do it physically, but don't take his life. You can't take his life. So Satan went from the presence of the Lord and smote Job with sore boils from the sole, the bottom of his foot, unto the crown of his head, to his crown. And he, Job, took him a potsherd to scrape himself withal, and he sat down among the ashes. Now get this, then his wife, she's discouraged. Then says, wife of him, dost thou still retain thy integrity? She, I, I think she, Miss Job's hurting. Curse God and die. Was that a smart thing to say? No. Was that the right thing to say? No, but... I know that when my father-in-law was... Um, he lost a lot of weight. He was just so sick. He was just skin and bones. And you know, for a while, you want him to live. But even Mom Sigma said, you know, it's time, it's time for you to go. Let him go. It was just, he was in pain, terrible pain all the time. He had a, and he went into hospice, and, and within a week, he was gone. She didn't want him to die, but he was at the place of no return. There was no use continuing to just, you know what I mean. So that's what she, I think she's feeling. I don't want to see you suffer anymore. We've been through so much. We've lost 10 kids and everything. Now it's you. Verse 10. But he said to her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. Boy, Job still got some fire in him, doesn't he? Whoa! <laughs> Mrs. Job got scorched. Don't mess with Job. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God, and shall we not receive evil? In all this did not Job sin with his lips. But what started off? The accuser of the brethren. The devil. So, if you live for God, there are going to be false accusations about you from other people. The, uh, false accusation is a lie. I've had many people over the years lie about me. And how do you defend yourself? Jesus said, well, sometimes you can, pretty obvious. But um, let's go to go back to Job chapter one. We already read First Peter five eight to start off. Job one seven. And the Lord said to Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth. What's he doing? Walk, what's he walking around the earth for? Looking at someone to destroy. That's what these people who are, who are criminals do, crooks. They'll case places out. They'll, they'll see people's patterns when they go to work and do this. And they know their schedule so that when they leave, that's when they'll break in. I mean, people have done that to rob banks and, and all that all that. Terrible stuff, because they're, because they're evil. 
Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro on the earth, and from walking up and down in it. Okay, according to 1 Peter 5, 8 and Job 1, 7, Satan also walks around the... What's the answer? In the back again. Earth. Okay, well, maybe we should just... Why don't you sit in the platform with the pastor and uh, we'll just work together, you and I. Earth, that's right. So where is Satan now? He's in the air? He's in the earth. So I'm going to ask you a real honest question. I don't want you to answer it. Do you think the devil's after you? If you say no, that's the wrong answer. So from these scriptures, we learn that Satan is alive and active in many areas. We're not going to read those right now. All right. Satan's working among the unsaved. So let's, we're going to go to each one of these, and you'll notice the words that come out. Let's go to Matthew chapter 13, please. Matthew chapter 13. So the devil, he's, um, he's not omnipresent. No, he's not. He's not like God. God can be everywhere at one time. He's not. But... He gets around, and he's, you know, you got 24 hours a day, and uh, you can move pretty quickly. You can mess up a lot of people, right? Yes, you could. Matthew chapter 13 and verse 38. Matthew chapter 13 and verse 38. So, Satan's workings among the unsaved. And he uses the unsaved to cause problems in our lives. Sometimes he uses the saved to cause problems in our lives. Matthew chapter 13, verse 38. The field is the world. Um, okay. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. So, according to these scriptures, what does call, God call those who are lost? The first one is the children of the wicked one. They're children of the wicked one. Okay? Then let's go to John chapter 8, please. John chapter 8. John chapter 8. And that's a familiar verse to us. John chapter 8, verse 44. So Jesus is here um, not defending himself, but just really scorching some unbelievers and troublemakers. But verse 44, he says, Ye, of, ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer, from the beginning, yeah, what beginning? Right in the garden, well, Adam and Eve, they brought death. And then the first two boys, so he's a troublemaker, <laughs> troublemaker. He's, he, will do, he was a murderer from the beginning and abode not the truth because there's no, tr there's no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. So, according to the scriptures, what does God call those who are lost? So, here, what would be the word? You are of your father the devil. Lust your father, you will do. He's a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. And I just think of Yes, go ahead, Miss Hawkins. Right, yeah. Children of the devil. That's exactly right. Liars. Okay? Child of the devil. Acts chapter 13, please. Acts chapter 13. So lying is not a good thing, is it? Thank you. Thank you. Acts chapter 13, verse 10. According to the scriptures, what does God call those, call those who are lost? Acts chapter 13, verse 10. 
and said, O fool, O fool of all civility and all mischief, thou child of the devil, thou enemy of all righteousness. That one's pretty easy, right? Child of the devil. And one more. 1 John chapter 3, verse 10. 1 John chapter 3, verse 10. So does the devil have a lot of influence? Yep. So why are some of our children or some of our grandchildren or some of our family being messed up? Because of Satan, the influence of Satan, the followers of Satan, this world, this wicked world is controlled by the devil. Okay? 1 John chapter 3. Verse 10, in this the children of God are manifest and the children of the devil whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. Wow. Children of the devil, right? So they are his children. You're saved, you're a child of God. You're a follower of God. You're a believer in the Lord. And so this is what we are dealing with in this world. Well, can unsafe people be nice? Yeah. But I'm going to tell you something right now. There's not a lot of people that you can trust. I mean, one of the biggest jobs, one of the toughest things for an employer is that their employees steal off of them. So it's... Um, it's not an easy thing. Okay, would you pass these out, please, again? You give these out, David, please. So have you ever gotten upset at somebody? You ever had an argument? You ever had some hot words? Of course not. No one of us would do that. We never have a problem with anybody. We just love everybody, and we never raise our voice. We never throw anything. We don't, we just, we're, we're all calm, cool, and collective. Well, you know who's stirring that up? The devil. The devil's doing that. Separation. I talked about that the devil wants to cause chaos, and what's happening is happening is people, especially those who are away from the Lord, Christians who are away from the Lord, they're backslidden. They're not going to church. They're not reading the Bible. They're backslidden. the The devil is using outside influences to influence our loved ones, our friends, people we know, to wreak havoc in their life, and that's sometimes one of the biggest reasons for conflict. They're, they're being influenced by the Internet, by the TV, by the airways, by people at work, by their friends. They take on their beliefs. They take on their attitudes. And what's it cause? Conflict. That's the cause, because that, that, that's exactly what he does. He just, he, he's a wrecking ball. He's an atomic bomb everywhere he goes. That's why nations against nation. Wars, rumors of wars. It's just every day, all day long. Okay, let's go to um, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 4, please. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 4. Don't think that's far-fetched. It's not. 
it, it, it's it's not. Second Corinthians chapter four and verse four. Second Corinthians chapter four. So, um, what is Satan's major work among the lost? What's his, what's his major work among the lost? All right, Second Corinthians four four. In whom the God of this world, that Satan, prince and power of the air, remember. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. So what's the devil do? Yes. Blinds our minds. Everybody's seen blind people, right? They don't know where they're going. They can't see. They have a cane. They have an eye-seeing dog. They hold on to someone's arm. They can't see. They're blind. Well, that's how the people in this world, they're blinded. If you were unsaved, you would be doing the same things they do. You don't think so. But we, you, we would be doing those things. Blind the minds. What's he do? Their minds. He blinds their thinking. He messes up their thinking. Their thinking's messed up. He's warped their thinking. And today people don't think. They, they don't think. Be Psalm 46.10, be still and know that I'm God. That's the reason that God says be still. Take some time and think about me. We rush through everything. We're in a busy world. Thinking, wrong thing about salvation, work salvation, right? Yeah, almost everybody believes that. One of the guys say, put the carpet in. I, I, he says, yeah, you got a baptist by a baptistry back there. I said, yeah. I said, you want to get dunked? He said, no, I was already, I've already been baptized. Found out where he goes to church. He's a, he's a Mormon. He's lost. Nice guy, unsaved. How's the, mind, how's the devil blind people's eyes? They think about the temporary. They don't think about the eternal. Who thinks about the eternal? How often do you think about the eternal? It's all about right now. I got. I got to work. I got to make money. That's true. I got to take care of my family. I got to lock the house. I got to get groceries. I got to do this. I got to do that. I mean, so much of our time is taken up with the temporary. So he blinds their eyes. They're they're blinded, and the only thing that'll cut through. We've, we talked about Hebrews chapter four, verse twelve. That that's the only thing that'll cut through the word of God. Now he might use your testimony. Your testimony is powerful if, you're, if God's changed your life and you're living for the Lord. It's powerful. But the Word of God is most powerful. They've got to get the Scriptures. They've got, they got, they got to work in the heart. That's the only thing that's going to change them. And, um, okay, let's go back to, let's go to um, Satan's workings among real Christians. Oh, so we know, we know the devil has folks who are unsaved. He's just... And now they're out causing us uh, trouble. Would you ever think, you're here tonight, would you ever think about going out tonight and beating somebody up and stealing their money and things like that, beating the tar out of them and, and robbing them? Well, that's the, They do that all the time. They think about that. They think about that. Before I was a Christian, I was... I can't say always, but a lot of the time, I was on the hunt to steal. That's terrible. It's, it's bad. Except those people don't steal ice cream bars and, and Milky Way bars and things like that. They steal big things. 
And whereas maybe you might egg someone's house, they shoot bullets through it. It's just, and we can't comprehend it. Why are you, why are you hurting that person? That's, their, their mind's messed up. And some people, Romans 1, been given over to Satan totally. Okay, 1 John chapter 4. I'm not there myself. 1 John chapter 4. So Satan's at workings among, among Christians. He says real Christians. A lot of folks say they're Christians and they're not Christians. Everybody is a Christian today, right? Yeah. By the way, I'm coming out with my new Bible, and I hope that you'll buy it. It's called the, the Liberty Bible. And uh, Poor President Trump. He's, got, he's selling a Bible. Did you know that? Yeah, he is. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have told you that. First John chapter 4, verse 4. I'm getting off key here. Verse. Ye are of God, little children. Ye are of God, little children, and, and, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So in John 4, 4b, 4, um, who is the one that is in you? Okay? You are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Now, really, the, what's the right way to say this? The abs demons, and let's go to Ephesians chapter 6. We're going to skip Jude 6 and Matthew 12, 26. Let's go to Ephesians, go backwards to Ephesians chapter 6. And we're going to look at verse 11 and 12. Do you believe the devil puts people in your path to mess you up? I do. If you read the book of Proverbs, there are several chapters given to the wicked woman the Bible calls the harlot. And uh, those and other folks are out to cause people problems and influence people. Um, just like you'd be happy to see someone get saved, they'd be, they'd be happy to see somebody fall. And they wouldn't feel bad, badly about it. They wouldn't feel bad. They don't have a conscience. Which is, it's just totally sad. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11 and 12. So the Bible first sees as devils, demons, and let's look at that. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11 and 12. Verse 11, put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. That's the tricks, the wiles, the tricks, the traps of the devil the, to ensnare you, the wiles. He's deceitful. He's crafty. He's wise unto evil. We're supposed to be simple unto evil. Verse 12, for we wrestle not against flesh. We're not wrestling against flesh and blood but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness, get this, rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Spiritual wickedness in high places, who does that make you think of? Thank you. Rome, Pope. And other folks like him. Okay, let's look at a few more and we'll, we'll uh, stop for tonight. A, Satan, let's go to 1 Thessalonians. We're in Ephesians. Go forward to 1 Thessalonians chapter 3. 1 Thessalonians chapter 3. All the religions came out of the Catholic Church. Because it's a work of salvation. That started back with Cain, remember? Abel and Cain. Abel gave a sacrifice. What did Cain give? His work with his hands. Out of my garden. I got this. Here's a good looking gourd. Good, good, good looking gourd, Lord. Look at this tomato. Isn't that a big one? Yeah, I, I worked and I gave you my best one. No, 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 no. no. That's, that's works. We, we can't work our way to heaven. Okay, 1 Thessalonians chapter 3 and verse 5. For this cause... When I could no longer forbear, I sent to know your faith, 
lest by some means the tempter have tempted you and our labor is in vain. Do you get that? Because the devil's out to get you. We've had young folks in this church in the last year that got saved. They really got saved. We gave them Bibles. They were coming to church every week, every week, every week. I don't know. I'm thinking of a couple right now. I don't know if they're going to come back. One got involved with a friend. One got involved with some activities at school. I don't know if those, those two will come back. Bought clothes for him. What happened to him? That right there. We got him saved. The devil's influenced some, and I don't know. Look at it again, First, first Thessalonians 3, 5. For this cause, when I could no longer forbear, I sent to know your faith. I was, I'm worried about you. You ever get worried about your kids? I was I'm worried about it. how you doing? My my dad wrote me one time. He said about one of my one of my brothers. He said, "How's so and so doing? I haven't heard from him in a long time." My dad was worried. What's wrong? Why isn't he writing me? Why isn't he communicating to me? That's wrong. For this cause, when I could no longer forbear, I sent to know your faith, lest by some means the tempter have tempted you in our labor in vain. We've been working on you, man. I don't want to lose you too. I want you to grow. I want you to get stable, get stabilized, get grounded. But that's what the devil does among Christians. He tempts them. The word is tempt. Satan can still tempt at me. Um... Last one, let's go to Revelation chapter 12. The last verse we'll, verses we'll look at tonight. Revelation chapter 12. The devil tempts us every day. Revelation chapter 12, 9 and 10. Revelation chapter 12, verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil. He's a dragon, he's a serpent, he's a devil, and Satan, all the same. Which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast with him. Remember, because of pride. Talked about that two weeks ago, the book of Isaiah. All right? Um... Verse 9 and 10. And the great dragon was cast out, and the old stronghold of it was deceived. The whole world was cast out in the earth, and the age were cast. And, um, oh, I didn't read verse 10, did I? I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and the strength and the kingdom of our great God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of the brethren is cast down, which accuse them before God day and night. Satan does accuse me. He is the accuser of the brethren. So Satan's working among real Christians. It's true. He's out to get us. No, we're not a big enough fish to, we're not Abraham, and we're not King David, and we're not the Apostle Paul, uh, we're not Job, we're just, a Christian living our life and trying to please God, but he'll use other people. And the city of Valparaiso is full of them. The city of Westville is full of them. Lots of them in La Crosse. A lot of them in Portage. Trying to mess our lives up. The devil, he's real. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we uh, ask, uh, Lord, this is not necessarily a fun um, study looking these verses up and talking about the devil over and over again. And, and we'll be on a few more weeks, two, three more weeks. I'm not sure. But I'll tell you what, it's a lot better to read these verses and realize that he's real and it's not a joke and it's not Casper the friendly ghost because if it keeps us from being, from falling away or being tempted and, and going to sin, it would be a great thing if we could learn and be on out for the devil working 
through other people trying to get us, trying to get us upset. Set underneath the collar. Trying to get us to do wrong, lose our testimony, lose our cool, or do something stupid. Lord, help us not to do that. Help us to be led of the Spirit. 1 John 4 says, Greater is He that is in you than He's in the world. And we know that's the Holy Spirit. So I pray, Holy Spirit, you'd help us to put on the armor of God and to live for you, live for you every day and to walk with you. So, Lord, please uh, keep us from temptation and keep us from the devil. In Jesus' name, amen.